Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Neo, Episode 17, A Defiled Holy Mountain. We are going to Mount Ibuki. Now, I couldn't find too much about Mount Ibuki online. It's certainly beautiful. I find a lot of photos. It's got a lot of hiking trails. It's one of Japan's tallest mountains. It has some of the heaviest snowfall on record. Couldn't find much else about the folklore of the region. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't any. It doesn't mean that there's nothing that's considered mystical about the mountain. It simply means it's not readily available online. For a lot of these things, keep in mind that I know a good deal about this part of Japanese history, but the people at Team Ninja and Tecmo Koei they probably know more. They're really obsessed with this. Well, Tecmo Koei is really obsessed with this time period. Just going off to find another Kodama. Up here, you'll find a few areas where enemies are actually fighting each other. I don't know exactly why. I'm assuming some of the Eastern Army has caught up with the Western Army here and are fighting or there are disputes going on. Here is a prime example. If you join in the fight as well, they'll oftentimes just all team up on you. There I'm using a Key Burst. The Key Burst allows you to easily drain the stamina of enemies around you, especially through their guard. Key Burst is a sword skill. It is also a Omnio magic that you can unlock as a spell. I'm not quite sure what to talk about this episode. Usually I talk about the history, but we've covered most things that are related here. I could talk a little about Ishida Mitsunari. So, Ishida Mitsunari was a person who served underneath uh, Toyotome Hideyoshi. He was a very, very loyal servant and rose up to the ranks pretty quickly. After Hideyoshi's death, he wasn't very happy at all. He was very displeased with the death. Also, just showing off that explosive there. I could have easily avoided it, but I wanted to show it off. He was very disappointed with the death of Hideyoshi and how everyone was happening, everything was being treated. He wasn't very happy either with the Council of Five Regents how they were taking over and saying they were doing things in the best interest of Hideyoshi's son, Hideyori. But they were acting of their own interest, especially Tokugawa Ieyasu. Mitsunari, he managed to convince the Usagi clan to marshal their forces against Tokugawa. He rallied them, and then, while Tokugawa was dealing with them in the north, he got together the Western Army. Unfortunately, as you've seen in this LP, that did not work out very well for Ishida Mitsunari. He 
Now he has fled to Mount Ibuki with Edward Kelly, which is why William is here. William doesn't really care about Ashida Mitsunari at all. He just wants to find Kelly and get back his guardian spirit. That's in general how this has gone, is... William hasn't really cared to about killing all of these people, fighting them. They're stopping him from getting to Kelly, but... It's kind of one of those things where both sides don't know the other's true motivations. So, if they had known that he was just going after Kelly, they could have probably avoided a lot of hardship of William kicking their asses. There's also a sort of theme in Neo of the greater good. There is another theme, which is might versus righteousness. Might ver mighty versus the weak. You saw it especially with Otani Yoshitsugu, with his death and what he said. The idea being that the Toyotomi side, or the Western Army side, underneath Ishida Mitsunari, are the righteous because of their fighting for what Toku, uh, for what Hideyoshi would have wanted. Also, I don't know why that just skipped right there. That's odd. I had that problem during the Four Honor LP. But this idea that the weak are righteous and the mighty are not. That Tokugawa Ieyasu may be stronger than Ishida Mitsunari, but he's not the one on the right side. And that Otani Yoshitsugu, for instance, wanted to have a world where both the weak and the strong can coexist. So just fighting a large group of enemies at once. What you'll see sometimes is an enemy with a conch shell. What they'll do is they'll blow it and aggro every enemy in the area after you. If you can, you want to take out that enemy by shooting them in the head from a distance. For taking on so many enemies, though, I should have learned from the duelist Musashi. Musashi did take part in the Battle of Sakigahara. I, again, can't remember exactly how he felt about it. I could have swore he was very disoriented by it all. A tactic of his that he used, he talks about it in the Book of Five Rings as well, is you run away from a group of enemies that are coming at you. Then, you wait and see who is the fastest. Whoever runs out at the front, turn around and kill them immediately. Start running again. See who's the fastest? Kill them immediately. Because everyone will run at different speeds, so that way you can single out targets and kill them. It was a very effective technique. He was a duelist, but he was often ambushed by groups of people. He fought sometimes in a sort of guerrilla warfare style. If I remember right, he managed to kill over 50 people over the course of his life. Which, it sounds like a small number at first until you realize killing just one person is hard enough. 50 people without even dying? Because Musashi lived to an old age. He retired and became a sort of Buddhist monk in a reclusive hermit area.
that was when he wrote the Book of Five Rings. If you ever find yourself confused when going through this level, just look for the torches and the braziers. braziers. You can't see it, but I kind of rolled my eyes in my head at myself right there. Braziers. Here's another instance of enemies fighting each other. An enemy with an Odachi and then one with a spear. That's quite a dangerous long-range combination. But yeah, just follow the fire. They'll generally lead you to where you're supposed to be going. Something I'm planning to do in the future is showing off uh, skill moves more. I play in a very practical way. I use just quick slices, I mostly use mid stance, sometimes low stance. Those are what I'm practiced most with and I just find them best for most situations. And I find for key management, not using skills helps a lot more. But I'll try to show them off more in the LP. Something I may not have talked about is familiarity. Familiarity for items increases their effectiveness over time the more you use them. When you're at high familiarity, they cap out. Uh, each item has its own different limit to where it will cap at. When an item's familiarity is high enough and you get something new, you want to switch out for the new thing that's slightly better or even slightly worse with a familiarity that will start going up again and to offer the old one up at the shrine. The higher the familiarity that you offer at the shrine, the more Amrita you get from an item. I can also talk a little bit about Anyo magic. For magic, it can make the game much easier than it is. The talisman that I have right now is the weakness talisman. When I use it on an enemy, it lowers their defenses and makes me hit them harder. It's especially useful against bosses. Or just single target tough enemies. It's not useful against groups. There is another one that I'm fond of that lowers the attack damage of an enemy. It's especially useful again against bosses or enemies that would otherwise one shot you. What is possibly the best offensive talisman though to use is Sloth. Sloth causes an enemy to move more slowly, even slower than the lightning effect does. But if you combine them, if you use both lightning on an enemy and Sloth, their attacks will be so heavily delayed it'll be almost impossible to get hit by them. Here we see a conch shell in action, and a ton of enemies come scrambling their way towards me. And hijinks ensue. It was an embarrassing death, but a pretty funny one, so I felt like keeping it in. It 
At least that's just a quick run right back there. You may have noticed I brought Paired Riken as my Guardian Spirit. That is because the boss of this level is weak to lightning. Now you might not know that looking at the wiki because of... The wiki for Neo is really bad and incomplete. I'll try to, in the thread, put down resistances for bosses, what they're weak to, tactics, information about them. The thread sort of has its own wiki in it, in the information section, if you're interested. But it is time now to go up and fight the boss of Mount Ibuki. First, I have to get past this guy who likes to guard a lot. Now, you can probably guess who the final boss is of this level. It should really be no surprise. Ishida Mitsunari is not really a tough boss. He's got low health, all things considered. He's more about speed than anything else. At the start of the fight, he often likes to fire off beams with his sword in each direction. In doing so, though, he'll often start off on the slope upwards, so they'll go right over your head. When he jumps backwards up into the air, get ready to dodge or move to the side. He's going to go for a grapple attack. If he's charging up a swing, dodge because he's either going to be doing a big spinning slash or he'll be firing off another projectile. You can move to a different height to get out of range of his beam attacks because they can either go over or under you. They'll be on the level that he's on. He'll fight with his Guardian Spirit activated almost the entire time. Also found a little Kodama. One out of stamina, you can get some good hits on him, but he will bring his living weapon out and Guardian Spirit out almost immediately after. When he fires out his beam attacks, also get ready to watch for falling stalactites. When he's knocked down, you cannot do a grapple attack on him. You cannot do a grapple attack on Ishida Mitsunari, to my knowledge. He is weak to lightning. He's resistant to wind. I think he is resistant to poison as well.
you mostly just want to dodge to the side and get behind him. That's where he's weakest, and that's Ishida Mitsunari. Dealt with. Now, for a bit of a twist. さんの時から使えた秀吉様私はついていくだけであった義を重んじ刀の木を民と共に歩む秀吉様の描きし美しき夢いつしか私の夢となっていた秀吉様亡きあとその夢を汚す家康目を打てぬとは私が謝っておるのかなぜ殺さぬ久しいの三成殿道秀殿何故その他の忠義誠にあっぱれされど人の世には忠義より重きものがありもおすそれは大義じゃ三成殿忠義を重んずるあまり大義に背かれますなあなたも大義のため信長様を討ち主君殺しの汚名をかぶったというかさればまたしも大義に裁かれよう経理目が私が信した信長様を改としてよみがえらせ再び大乱の渦を起こそうとしておりますアンジン殿家康殿が退位この国が太平のため家の者を止めてくだされ<音楽> 